you can get a camera. Welcome to the Iowa City Community School District School Board meeting on June the 7th. My name is Chris Lynch. I call this meeting to order. I'd like to thank those in the audience and those on TV for taking an interest in our district business. I'd like to start this special school board meeting tonight by introducing those at the table with me. To my right is Superintendent Steve Murley, then Directors Lori Rotland, Phil Hemingway, Brian Kersling, Latasha Deloche, Chris Liebig, Board Secretary Craig Hansel is joining us up here tonight and Recording Secretary Kim Colvin. Tonight is a special school board meeting, so there's really one agenda broken, one agenda item regarding appointment broken into three agenda items. And the first agenda item is the appointment process. Uh, I want to start tonight by thanking our applicants for volunteering. Um, when you uh, start a process like this, you never know, you know if you're gonna get anyone or uh, who you're going to get. And I just want to say I think we got seven really amazing candidates and uh, thank you for volunteering your personal time and for your volunteering your leadership to the district. Certainly we know this is a big job and a big commitment so on about a week's notice to uh, commit that amount of time is, uh, is just amazing and I want to thank the uh, applicants for that. So, uh, do have a relatively big update on the uh, process tonight and Steve if you want to bring up the uh, table. We uh, did get clarification this afternoon, and let me start by uh, also thanking um, a few groups. I want to thank the Johnson County Auditor's Office for their assistance over the last three weeks, um, the State Elections Office, um, the Iowa Secretary of State's Office, and the Eternal Attorney General's Office. So that's a lot of people that have been involved uh, in the last week, and we got guidance this morning and I literally mean this morning, just before lunch, from the uh, Auditor General's office through the Secretary of State office, that um, the guidance on the uh, term, so the, the length of time if we were to appoint has changed, not changed, but they've provided guidance on what it would be, and it would basically be the November general election. Um, so in the past, it's always been to the next school board election, which would have been in September of 2017. So what's on the screen, you can see, uh, is kind of reflecting that input. So if we were to appoint tonight, um, the, it would be effective uh, the next meeting when the person's sworn in and through the November 8th uh, general election. Now, a number of challenges with the general election. Um, one is the cost. So you can see up there $236,000 for a general election. So if you think about a general election versus school board election, obviously there's a lot more polling stations, there's a lot more staff and people because there's a lot more voters and therefore the cost is just significantly more. And based on uh, previous practice on how the uh, auditor's office would divvy up those costs, we would have to pay up to 50% of the precincts that are relevant to our district. And their best guesstimate based on um, previous practice would be the election would cost us approximately $75,000. And there could be some range on that. Um, now they said it might be negotiable because it's, this has never happened before, we've never had this situation, so it's all new, but if they were to base it on past practice, um, the estimate today would be $75,000. Um, of course, when you go through the election, then it would, they would ser serve the uh, rest of the term, and that's true in all cases. So, Now if we go to a special election, like now, so if we do not appoint, uh, our action, or lack of action would trigger a special election. It looks like that would be July 19th. I think last meeting we talked the 12th or the 19th. The auditor's office is recommending the 19th just based on logistics. And as you can imagine, it's quick to start with, so having an extra week would be helpful. Um, so we just got that this afternoon, I think, or they'd prefer right. the 19th. Um, and the cost would be more like 15 to 17,000. I know we've talked to range 10 to 20,000, but if you tried to that would be based on past practice where we'd have the same number of polling stations, the same number of, of voting hours as the past, and um, without input from us, it would, it would basically just stay, the auditor's office would, would, right. would run a similar election to the past, and uh, based on their discretion on a few things, but it would be basically look like a regular school board election. And then, of course, if you get elected, it would be for the remainder of uh, Tom Yates' term through uh, September of 2019. So, so that's a 
relatively big change, and I think we should discuss the process. And um, I think probably quickly we may want to get to the point where we may choose not to appoint. Um, I think I'd recommend we don't appoint, given this change, just based on the liability. Oh, sorry, I should have also said um, the logistics, the uh, for an election to happen on, in November time frame, the, uh, the logistics the auditor's office would have to deal with would be incredible. So some of the general elections precincts don't line up with our precincts or don't line up with the district. So you could have precincts that are split, and you'd actually have to have two ballots at the precinct potentially based on whether you lived in the district or live outside the district. So you can imagine the complexity of that on a general election night trying to execute that and not make any mistakes. Um, it's just incredibly complicated. So, And it, actually they said most of the uh, precincts do not line up with ours and so some of the precincts would have 100% of our uh, constituents but different ballots because they're different school district precincts versus general voting precincts and then some of them have our uh, district constituents but then constituents from other school districts and so most of the ballot stations would require at least two ballots if not more uh, and some of those would be 100 percent of ours but many of them would be ours and others so that's just incredibly complex and again this is kind of why generally past practice has been to go to a school board election because it's the same district the same polling station all that good stuff now just so everybody knows to um, <clears throat> There is a new law that clarifies all this. So if we were making this appointment on January or July 1st or later, um, it would be back to we would the appointment would be good through to the next school board election. But there's been a series of law changes, and again, the attor attorney's auditor's uh, guidance today is if you're making an appointment now, then it's effective to the next general election. And maybe just a note on that, the Attorney General's opinion today uh, takes it back to July 1st of 2015 because that's the last time there was uh, legislative change that was enacted. And when they went through and looked at the impact across the state, there are approximately 30 other districts that find themselves in the same position we are. The only difference would be that, uh, at least at this point in time, it appears 28 of them already made appointments. Um, and will be required to use the general election. Uh, there's our district and another district that are still in process of making an appointment, so they have the ability to actually have this conversation today. And just so people are aware, we don't we don't have the option of waiting past July 1st. Our time runs out on Monday or June 12th. Yeah, that's correct. So. I'd also like to just thank uh, Senator Dvorsky and Senator Bolcom for um, getting involved and helping uh, just, you know, provide uh, help provide our point of view of getting an answer today. Obviously, getting this answer tomorrow would have been uh, not very good. Um, so thank you to everybody involved. You know, while everybody's running a primary election today, we were able to get this guidance today, so thank you for that. So discussion? I mean, I would propose that we not take action tonight. Well, and are we going to hear community comment? Yes, we will. Okay. I just well, want to get our point of view so people know what they're commenting okay. on. So my I, I, Oh, go ahead. Just, it's just a quick question. So the seventy-five thousand will come out of which fund? That's the general fund cost. So the money that goes towards our kids, basically. That's correct. Okay. So, Chris, from a process standpoint, I thought we'd talk about the process, sure. allow community comment to happen, and then we can do direction. Okay. I think we want to provide some guidance. Like, if our point of view is we're not going to appoint, that may point. change the community comment. Does yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much uh, leaning toward your department also. I mean, there's a couple of pros to, to having it in November, which is you would have a lot higher turnout, a world record for a school board election probably. Uh, and, you know, you'd, you'd fill the seat sooner if we appointed somebody. But awful lot of cons. Um, and for me, the main ones are we are going to we are gonna make some big decisions over the next three and a half months. And... Um, you know, if, if they hinge on the vote of an appointed member, um, whoever is not happy with those decisions is going to feel like they're just not legitimate. And uh, I, I just feel a lot more comfortable if, uh, if we had an elected person filling that space. The cost, too, of course, is also a concern. Any disagreement? No, I, I would urge no action, so we... I do, I do want to say thank you, though, to, oh, people, who, to people who applied. And yes. It's nice to have options. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And, and having been uh, one of those people that has done that twice <laughs> in, in, uh, before, um, 
Uh, it's, it's, uh, I want to echo what uh, Chris said that yes, we appreciate everyone that put their, put their name up and, and everything as, as to, to serve. Uh, but uh, I think it's, the public needs to weigh in on this one as, a, as far as the election. And I just want to say that the, this morning I woke up um, fully intending to come here to this meeting and, um, and express my personal belief that we should be um, appointing. But as of about 11.30 this morning, uh, that turned 180 degrees around. For me, it's, it's very much uh, my concerns about the, a no, uh, an appointment only lasting five months and then essentially spending 75 grand out of our general fund to basically inject politics into school-related issues in an election. I mean, typically the school issues are separate, um, and you don't have uh, a presidential election interfering where, goodness knows, everything gets stirred up. So um, or drowned out. Yeah. What was that? What was that? Or drowned out. I mean, when so right. many other and, offices. And you're, you're right. You're right, Chris. That certainly that we would have a world record turnout for a school board election, but. Um, there is a whole another host of issues that go along with that. So um, I, I would not be supportive of making an appointment tonight. I do hope, uh, having gone through this process, perhaps it's uh, for our folks that have applied or maybe people that didn't apply, hopefully it's got people thinking about running, whether it's in the special election or in, or in 2017. I mean, that would be a good outcome. Um, so I hope maybe Maybe we generated a couple of candidates for next year. It would be uh, yeah. a positive. Pretty impressive folks, so I hope mm. they definitely put their name on the ballot. So with that, I suggest we do community comment, and then we can provide Craig a little direction on what uh, next steps. All right. With that, uh, let me just... Thank you for your interest in the Iowa City Community School District and for your willingness to share your comments. The public is reminded if they wish to speak, to, they need to complete a speaker form found at the table in the lobby and turn it in. You are reminded to give your name and address. Community comment tonight will be specific to the board vacancy topic and shall be limited to four minutes per speaker. So if anybody else wants to get in, give me your speaker form quickly. I have two, Paul Rosler and on deck will be Marla. Good evening, Paul Ressler, 30, Mary Court. First of all, I just want to say I applied because I really just enjoy spending Tuesdays with you guys. Uh, but on a serious note, uh, before this last election, I've been pretty involved. Uh, through the election, I was involved. After the election, I've stayed involved. Um, but I just wanted to take this opportunity. I know you probably are going to act this way, but I would like to withdraw my application uh, for considering um, for this appointment because I don't believe that the cost associated with it is worth being having being appointed. So. That's all I really wanted to say was that if you are going to discuss it, discuss it, I would like you to take my name off of your discussion. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Marla? Hello. I um, am Marla Swayze, and I also am, like Paul, would like you to withdraw my name from being appointed because I pretty much put my appointment in because I wanted to save the district money. And I know that if you're spending that kind of money on a November election, it would come out of the general fund, which is terrible. Um, it needs to be in there for the kids and our schools. And I am saddened that the state has put us in this situation by having this rigmarole because I hate that we're spending money out of the general fund anyway because of the special election. But, um, you know, I just want you guys to get on with your work. So. Anyway, thank you for the consideration. Thanks, Marla. Next item on the agenda is the board vacancy appointment. So, Craig, I think you're looking for a direction. We need to provide direction that uh, for you to inform the auditor's office that we have not appointed and we do not plan to meet again before June 12th. That's correct. And uh, is there consensus on that? Consensus. We could do a motion, but consensus, yes. Yeah. I so can, we can do a motion. I mean, right? Do we? Do you want a motion or consensus? Fine. Okay, I make a motion that we uh, do not act. Mm -hmm. I, 
I would expand that to uh, authorize your board secretary to uh, contact the county auditor okay. for a special election. I, I uh, uh, as previously stated, I authorize the district secretary to notify the necessary personnel to Got that, uh, let them know that we are taking no action. Second. Kim, you got that? It's clear as mud, right? Kim? Further discussion? Kim, we're ready to vote when you are. Online voting is open. All votes have been cast and the motion carries with all directors voting in favor. Craig, is there anything else you need from us? Nope. I'll just prepare a letter tomorrow and uh, transmit that to the county auditor. Very good. Any other questions from the board? Next steps process? No. I, I, we might just give a round of applause to the applicants. That sure. Are here Thank you, as, applicants. As as they're thanking us. <laughs> and I would make a motion to adjourn. Or second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Hey. World record. <laughs> Another world record. <laughs>